Last time, we continued improving the vertical slice architecture in our WPF application by extracting a pages layer that sits above our features layer. And the goal of the pages layer is to compose multiple features together and ultimately break feature to feature dependencies because I want features to be self-contained and not have to depend on other features. However, what if multiple features need to share similar objects or application state? In this case, it wouldn't really make sense to extract a pages layer above our features layer. Instead, we'd need a layer underneath of our features layer that would contain those shared objects and state. So this time we're gonna introduce a feature to feature dependency that depends on application state, and then introduce a layer underneath of our features layer that multiple features can depend on in order to share that application state. So here in our project, this is secret message, same project we've been using throughout this vertical slice architecture refactor. And really the core domain logic of this application is that the user has to be authenticated in order to view a secret message that we get from our API. So very simple, let's run this. All right, so application loads up, already logged in. So we land on this homepage and we load the secret message that we fetch from our API. So let's dig into the code a little bit. So we were on the homepage. So let's come over to our pages directory. We were on the homepage, let's see the logic here. So we load our secret message by using this load secret message command, which lives over here in our view secret message feature. And as we can see, this fetches our secret message from our API and then defines it on our view model so that we can see it in the UI. But as I previously mentioned, we only want to display the secret message if we're logged in. And we already enforced this in our application by only going to the home page if we are logged in. But perhaps I want another check here. So maybe I want to check if we are not logged in. So we'll just throw in stub out a Boolean right here. So if we're not logged in, maybe I want to return early, not execute this query, and then maybe just show an error message. So we'll say, you must log in to view the secret message. But as you can see, we're in our view secret message feature. And if we want to get the logged in state, we're going to have to come over here to our authentication feature and get it from the authentication store. So let's do it. Let's add a field for our authentication store, import that over, define this field, and we'll just take it through the constructor. And now we can use this authentication store to check if we are logged in. Now we just gotta pass the authentication store to our load secret message command. So we conveniently already have that on our home view model and let's just pass it in. So this should work. Let's put a breakpoint down and run this. And here we are, we're making the logged in check. We are logged in and we see the secret message. And really we're always gonna be logged in because we only execute this command when we're on the home page, and that means we are logged in. So this is kind of like defensive programming, but we're gonna do this anyways to show off a feature to feature dependency that we just introduced on this shared authentication state. So our load secret message command lives in this view secret message feature and depends on our authentication store that lives in our authentication feature. So how are we gonna break this feature to feature dependency? Well, we have this pages layer that we introduced last time in the break feature to feature dependencies. So maybe we can move this load secret message command up to our home page. And then if the command lived up here, it wouldn't really be an issue that it references this underlying features layer where the authentication store lives. But if we move this command out of the features layer, then we'd be taking points off the scoreboard because then our application will be less cohesive we wouldn't have all of the logic regarding viewing a secret message living within this feature. And we kind of start to lose the value of this feature sliced vertical slice architecture in the first place. And it would also make the pages layer less meaningful because really all I want this pages layer to do is compose multiple features together and not be concerned with the implementation of actual features. So that being said, we are not gonna move this command to the pages layer. So really the only option is to move some of this authentication state underneath of our features layer so that it can be referenced by our authentication features and our secret message features and any other features in the future because authentication state and the current user of the application is pretty critical state and I could see being used by multiple features in an application. So we're gonna break down this authentication store, move it a layer underneath of our features, which I'm pretty excited about because this authentication store is kind of messy and does a lot of things. So 
this probably needs to be broken down anyways. So for the sake of this application, the layer that lives underneath of our features layer is going to be called entities. So let's add a folder in our application for entities. And this layer is going to contain shared objects and state relating to our domain. And alternatively, I was thinking you could name this something like domain and just have an entire domain layer that lives underneath of the features layer. But I'm not entirely sure how that domain layer would look. And I feel like this application doesn't really have rich enough domain logic to really try that out. But just something to keep in mind, maybe as the application grows, we could refactor to something like that in the future. But for now, we'll just call this entities. And the entity in our application that we want to share between multiple features is the current user of the application. Because most importantly, in this view seeker message feature, we want to see if the current user is logged in. So in this entities folder, we're just going to add another folder called users and we're going to define a user entity so just a class named user and for now all this user class is going to expose is whether or not the user is logged in so we're just going to have a single boolean for now to see if the user is logged in of course user could contain other info like the username or email for the user but we're just going to focus on solving our issues for now so just want to check if the user is logged in and the way we do this in the authentication store so this is where is logged in lives currently is by checking if this Firebase auth link is expired or not. So if the Firebase auth link is defined and not expired, that means we are logged in. And this Firebase auth link is part of Firebase authentication and just contains authentication tokens, whether or not they're expired or not, and other user state as well. So ultimately this user is gonna have to reference a Firebase auth link in order to determine whether or not we are logged in or not. So we're going to need a Firebase auth link in here. Let's import that and we'll just call it auth. And now let's just grab that is logged in check. So we'll just copy this, make this a read only property, same as before, where we just check if the Firebase auth exists and is not expired. So this represents a user in our application, but I want to manage and share this user application state throughout our application in multiple features. And the way I traditionally do this in a WPF application or really any front end application is with a store. So a store is a singleton that manages application state and keeps it centralized in one location. So let's implement a store in this user entity module. So let's add a new class in here and we'll call this the current user store because it's gonna contain the current user of the application and manage that state. And this might feel kind of weird having a store right next to what is essentially a model. But again, we're aiming for cohesiveness, so it makes sense for these two to live right next to each other. So this current user store, most importantly, it's gonna store the current user of the application. So we're gonna expose that user as a property here. We'll just call it user and we'll make the setter private. So just making it read only outside of the store. And then in the constructor, we'll just initialize it. So initializing it here, of course, that means the auth is null, which means we are not logged in, which will make sense at the time since we'll initialize this at the beginning of the application before we've logged in or loaded authentication state. But eventually the user is gonna log in or the user's authentication state is gonna get loaded when we boot up the application. So we're gonna have to update the auth property on this user. So let's expose a method to update the auth on that user, what's we'll called update auth. And we want the Firebase auth link that we wanna set on the user. So let's get that passed through here and import that. And we'll just take the user and set the auth. And the reason I define this method is because I want state changes to have to go through the store. So I don't want some object to just take this user and explicitly set this auth property, although it, it could, it could grab this user property that we expose on the store and then just set the auth here and then the state change wouldn't go through the store. So let's refactor this user a little bit to enforce that we don't want other things setting this auth. So let's make this auth private so that it can't be set. And then we can take the auth through the constructor and essentially make this completely read only. So we don't even need the setter since we set it in the constructor now. And there we go. That looks good. So now we don't risk anything just taking this user and setting the auth. Instead, now all the state changes have to go through the store, which means the store can't even set the user auth like this. Instead, we're just gonna have to initialize a new user. So let's do that and pass in the auth. And then when we initialize the store, 
we don't have an auth link, so we should provide a constructor where we don't need one. Because that's fair, we don't really need to provide an auth. If we provide nothing, then we just won't be logged in. Alright, so I'm satisfied with this store. It stores the current user for the application. So now let's begin using this current user store in our application. So now in the load secret message command, we're no longer going to reference the authentication store that lives in our authentication feature. We're going to reference the layer below us, the entity layer, and reference our current user store. So let's import that. We should rename this as well, current user store, fix this constructor parameter as well. And now to check if the user is logged in, we could dig into the current user store, grab the user, which will never be null, and check if we're logged in. So now this load secret message command no longer depends on the authentication feature. But now we need to update this state in the current user store to represent the logged in user. So our authentication store that lives in the authentication feature can reference that. So that means our authentication store is going to need the current user store as a field in here so that it can modify it. So let's get that passed in. Let's just regenerate this constructor. We have a naming conflict between our user and Firebase user. Let's reference the Firebase user here for now. But now the key thing about this authentication store currently is it stores this current Firebase auth link for the current user of the application. So instead of redefining another current Firebase auth link, let's just use the one that's on our user in the current user store so that we have that state consistent in one location. So let's not define this. And then is logged in, we can actually just reference this from our current user store user and see if they are logged in. So just delegate to the store. Same thing for the current user. We can delegate to the store again, dig into the user, grab the Firebase auth link, and look at the current user on that. Well, let's update these other auth link references to reference the current user store. Although this time we're actually setting the Firebase auth link. So for this, we want to use our current user store and update the auth. So that method that we had defined and just pass in that Firebase auth link. Same thing for these other setters, call it update auth. Should probably break this up into multiple lines. It's kind of long, but we'll leave it for now. Here we're setting the auth to null. So let's pass that in. And I think this method can handle null. Yeah, that'll work. Let's just go through and finish updating the setters at least. That should be good. And the rest of these are getters. So we want to dig into the store and get the auth. So there we go, updating all these setters. This is kind of messy, should have extracted this to like a helper property so that we just grab it easily. But this is fine for now, let's just get it to work at least. And there we go, now our current user state is isolated within the current user store and not duplicated in the authentication store now. And that might be all the references that we have. Let's see, can we build and see if this works? Looks like there's a reference that we're missing. Oh, and that's because we need to actually integrate the current user store in our application. So first our load secret message command is going to need the current user store passed in. So let's get that as a parameter to our home view model, the current user store, and let's pass that to the load secret message command. Then we also need the current user store passed to this factory function, and then we'll pass it along to our view model instantiation as well. And then we'll also have to pass the current user store to this load view model factory function. And now we're up in the app.xaml.cs. So let's pass in the current user store to the load view model as the second parameter. And if we want to resolve this from dependency injection, we're going to have to register it. So let's register it up here as a singleton, of course, because it manages application state that we want isolated and contained in one spot. So register the current user store, and this should be good. So let's summarize this real quick before we boot this up. So our load secret message command references the current user store, which lives underneath of our features layer, in order to check if the user is logged in. And then the authentication store that lives in the authentication feature references the current user store in order to essentially update the current user of the application after we do things like log in and log out. And then just reviewing the current user store, this is a singleton that isolates the current user state in our application. So now we no longer have a feature to feature dependency where the view secret message feature references our authentication feature, and this should work still as expected. So good start.
our home page booted up and we see our secret message was fetched successfully. So now let's log out and log back in. Make sure this works as expected, which I assume it will. Successfully logged in and we still fetch the secret message successfully. So we've solved the feature to feature dependency, but there's more improvements that we can make. So now that we store the current user of the application in this current user store, we really don't need to store it in the authentication store. So we don't need to expose these properties for the current user. And if the user's logged in on the authentication store, again, we can just depend on the current user store for that. But that probably breaks a few things because we were referencing those properties. Let's find where they are. So first on the app.zama.cs, we check if we are logged in in order to determine where to navigate. So instead, we can resolve the current user store here and check if we are logged in on that current user store. Let's fix this type and resolve the current user store there. And we also need to dig into our user property. So there we go, that looks good. Not really an improvement here, this was actually more code. But there's other places where we can see improvement. So for one, on this home view model, we would inject this authentication store into the view model in order to get the current user's display name. And I think that's really all we use the authentication store for here. So let's not use the authentication store here. Let's use the current user store. So to find a field for that, and now we can get into the current user store, get the current user, and get their display name. Except for now, we're not actually exposing display name on our user class, but we can. So let's expose a string for display name. And we can just get that from our auth link. So we can dig into the user on this Firebase auth link. Need to do some optional chaining because it could be null. And we can just dig into the display name property. So now back to the home view model. This reference works. Let's set this current user store field so that we can actually dig into this. And we can do that here in the constructor. And we already get the current user store passed into this home view model since we passed it to the load secret message command. So let's set that. And now we don't actually need the authentication store at all. Actually, yeah, we do. We need it for the logout command. Darn, I thought we were going to be able to completely remove the authentication store from this class. I mean, there are tricks that we could do in order to remove this authentication store reference, but I don't want to get into that now. We're in the pages layer, so it's fine to reference this underlying feature. And lastly, we reference the current user in this profile details view model that lives in our view profile feature. But now let's just reference the current user store since we got to get the current user from there instead now, as we should. So let's reference that current user store, grab the user, get the current user store passed through the constructor. So add a parameter for that, set our field. And now we also need to update our user class to expose email and is email verified. So pretty simple to do, just expose email and is email verified. And we can just dig into this user property again and expose these on our user. And this should be a Boolean. There we go, it looks good. And I think we'll also have to update this constructor to pass in the current user store. So a couple cascading changes here, no big deal. Pass along the current user store and also pass that into this profile view model, which we instantiate up in our app.zambo.cs. So now our authentication store doesn't really need to be referenced outside of this authentication feature since it no longer has to manage or expose the current user of the application. And I really wanna break down this authentication store even more because I still feel like it's doing too much. It might not even be necessary to have anymore, but that'll be way off topic. And I'm sure you've had enough of my rant already. Anyways, let's test out our application, make sure it still works with our recent changes and looks good. Logging in still works as well. And viewing our profile looks good as well. So just to summarize, we introduced a feature to feature dependency in our view secret message feature, since we wanted to check if the user is logged in and to do that, we had to reference our authentication feature before. And this time we broke that feature to feature dependency by introducing an entities layer that lives underneath of our features layer, which contains core domain entities of our application. And most importantly, now stores the current user of the application, which is super convenient because we can reference this critical state in any of our features. However, there's still various improvements I want to make in this application 
regarding vertical slice architecture, so stay tuned for more. Aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those in the comment section. If you enjoy the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.